<laughs> Good to talk to you both. Likewise. Starting with that note. Um, okay, so you guys worked in this film for I think two years, right? Yeah. Yes. And a lot of it was during the pandemic, so I assume you're doing voice work remotely. Yes, I mean, I did voiceover work in Los Angeles. I did some in Florida, and I also did some in Vancouver, British Columbia. The pandemic was terrible for so many things, but also amazing in the way that we were able to do it from different places as well. Or even in your closet, in your pajamas if you wanted to. What? Not this project specifically, but <laughs> voiceover like, in general. <laughs> I was gonna say, so there's, uh, you know, we're gonna know that half of Elemental was done. Yeah. The way she looked at you, I'm assuming you just like, sold no, all the No, I'm not telling you a story. <laughs> I, just, I just don't have the technology. Just, like an iPhone you would have in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Right, sure. Um, yeah, no, I, I guess I, I was in a couple of different cities as well. I remember being in New Orleans uh, recording this as well. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> wow, what a, I can't believe this, it's been two years. Yeah. Well, so what was it like when you kind of finally both got to see your characters come alive on screen? Because I assume a lot of it, you know, you, you weren't in the studio to see it unfolding as you no. provided your voice work. So. They, they showed very little um, in the creating of, the, or at least our part of, uh, you know, uh, adding our voices to the movie. And I'm so glad that we waited to see. We got a snippet at D23 and I was like, oh, this is going to be something unlike I, like, I've never seen anything like this. And we got to see the movie finally, like, well, a couple months ago? Like, two months ago, maybe? Maybe, yeah, two months ago. Yeah. I mean, it's wild because we've seen little drawings, and I think even in, just in my case, I can't speak for Mamadou, but anytime I wouldn't be able to get a scene, then Peter would be like, okay, this is what's happening, okay, now don't look. <laughs> and what uh, a big reveal. He's so good. It was so emotional, and it's like, you know, as the teasers came out, as the trailer came out, I was like, okay, 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 I want to see more. Because, you know, you do your job as an actor, a, a voice actor, and that's all you get. But I'm like, I got to see his performance, I got to see the animator's performance, I got to see everything else that was a part of this film that I had no idea would be a part of this film, you know? I think it's probably going to be interesting. We're finally entering an era where the leads of Pixar movies are kind of the first generation that mm. all their formative years Mm -hmm. They were growing up with Pixar as Pixar grew up. So, what was it like? Uh, yeah, wow. You know, That's a good point. Mind, yeah. Finding yourself finally as a Pixar main character, I assume, as someone who grew up with those movies the way the studio did. Yeah. That's it's a so cool, man. really cool point that you bring up because I don't know if people who were doing Toy Story were like, yeah, this is going to be yeah, exactly. iconic. <laughs> right. But I, I'm kind of grateful for the legacy beforehand because I, you know, this has shaped my childhood, my teenhood, adulthood. And to know that I get to be a part of that, like for other people. I mean, even being a part of this film, if I wasn't, this film would have changed my life because of the messages that it has. Yeah, I, I'm just like kind of sitting with what, like the reality. Of, you know, it's it's been two years, and you know we've, we've been working on it. We've been getting to know some of these people in a, in a way that's been really special. But like the reality of like you know the the history of it, it's really like. Um, it's humbling because it's like they they make some of my favorite movies, like favorite movies, yeah. regardless of genre or whatever, like up top of the list. And they're so moving and they're so good. And this one I feel so strongly about, like so strongly to be like so proud of a movie, like in the way I've never felt this way about a movie before. Oh, so it's really cool. it's really cool. And just I just get reminded every once in a while. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you imagine that the fire dish tasted like? <gasps> it looks good to me. It, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, okay, so they have these things with the elemental pop-up experience, and they have these little coal nut kits. I just made a coal nut kit last night with my best friend. How is it? Where's mine? It's pretty. You need to one, remember? Well, no. I don't, I'm not cooking anything. But no, like, but it was so cute, because all you had to do was like mash up Oreos and like yeah. put a bunch of stuff on it. Uh -huh. It was very <laughs> sweet. Oh, okay. I think like... Maybe eating that at 10 p.m., not the move. Oh, but it yeah. was like, Aww. it looked just like coal nuts. And they were, it was actually really, really good. Do you have any left over? No. Yeah, she's I'm gonna so be like, sorry. oh yeah, I actually I'm do, like, yes, right? do I have some coal nuts over here? No, but I think you'd like it. Are you a sweet lover? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Super sweet, super chocolatey, super coal nutty. You just ate it all? <laughs> <laughs> no, my friend ate a lot of it too. 
but I did eat a lot. It sounds cool. But you know, this is a great marketing pitch for all that, too. They're going to have to start selling cold nuts. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Guys, I, I think unfortunately we're out of time, but uh, <laughs> wonderful film in general, and I can't wait for everyone else to see it. I think it is going to speak to a lot of people the way it has to both of you, and thank you for helping bring this to the world. So Thank, thank you. you thank you so that. much. I appreciate it. Of course. It. I'm Will Mavity with nextbestpicture.com. Hey, Will. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you both. Thanks for being here. Okay, so I, I think the first big question is, it's pretty cool that this is a project that you both got to develop, I think, for seven years from the ground up. Mm -hmm. You compare that to something like The Good Dinosaur, where yeah. you were kind of brought in to a project that had been being developed for some time. So yeah. tell me a little bit about truly shepherding a project from the ground up like this. Um, it's It's been a, an emotional journey uh, uh, from the beginning of this. You know, after finishing Dino, which took about 18 plus months or something mm -hmm. like that from start to finish, this took a lot, a much longer, um, but it doesn't make it any easier. Um, the, the, the difference was that this started from a personal place. This, this wasn't a movie that like, I just straight pitched. I, I, it came from an experience that I had with my parents uh, in New York. I, I, I had this moment to thank them in this audience, and uh, uh, what I was thanking them about what, you know, was this idea that they had given up so much. They had given these lives. They had no money. They came to this country to build my brother and I a home. And uh, I, 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 I really didn't understand it when I was a kid. But the older I got, the more I really began to appreciate it more and more until I'm just this crying puddle, you know, just love from my parents. And uh, that was essentially the start of this thing. So I pitched this, to, uh, you know, or I had told that story to friends here. And they're like, that's your movie. And that's, it's just been this long journey getting that going. I keep joking that I feel like I just am delivering a, a, my PhD dissertation. Because I did three movies in less than 10 years, and then, and then this one in, in seven. So mm. that, uh, we, we've lived a lot of life, and then went through a pandemic. So it's been a cra kind of a crazy time. Well, that kind of leads into my next question, which was, it sounds like a lot of this project was the result of people having to collaborate remotely, mm -hmm. a lot of work being done in someone's individual house. So mm -hmm. tell me how that process was different. Yeah, it, you know, I don't think we, we realized how difficult it was until we finally were able to come back. And, uh, you know, we kind of, you were, feel like you were working with one hand behind your back and everything was intentional. Like, you couldn't just have the, you know, casual conversation. So I think that ended up being more fatiguing than I realized. but. But it speaks to sort of like the spirit of, of the studio. I mean, I keep also thinking, or I'm grateful that we got to continue working on the movie, you know, and that speaks to just the, the, the smart, resourceful people that we work with every day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ironically, the film is about making a connection. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. like, we couldn't for a big production of this was really a tough thing. Um, but the reach to even want to connect, that's the whole game. Like, if you don't even care about making the connection, this film is just, you know, let's just, just throw it away now. But uh, so much of the artists here really were trying to make that connection. And by the time we did get back, all those connection, connections were like firing, you know, like a well-oiled machine again. And uh, um, um, that humanity sort of came back, you yeah. know? But it was also like a, this weirdly intimate experience, too, because we're you're in everyone's homes. You know, so you see kids coming in. So we also got different exposure to our... our the lives we all live, because we're working, we're seen into people's homes. So, you know, whenever I read behind the scenes articles about VFX work in films, yeah. animators love to talk about, like, the two hardest things to design and animate are fire and water. Yeah. And then you decided to do a <laughs> film that's centered around those two notoriously hard things to create. Yeah. So tell me a, a little bit about creating characters that are made of the most difficult possible elements to animate. That is a great question. You know, when I first started, drew these ideas at first, even drawing them were, are not the easiest thing. But I thought, like with the, with you know Steve Jobs, the way this was started as an like art and tech mix, I, I, I for, 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 you know felt that there was some answer with technology. Um, but it became so much harder because controlling fire was the game. Uh, yeah. Like to your to your to, to all those VFX magazines that I also read, that like you know uh, where do you turn it on? But here it was the balance of something real and something caricatured and try because we were putting faces on them like when we first turned it on ember herself was so terrifying with this realistic fire <laughs> she looked like 
you know, like a, like a like a horror film, you know. And uh, but using the, the artists to try to find that graphic balance gave us one leg up. But then it was still about controlling fire, you know. And uh, so there was new tech that I never envisioned. I had no idea that it yeah. would be this difficult to do. Same here. And but she wasn't even the hardest thing. Like even as hard as she was, Wade was even more difficult. Yeah. Like he he was a monster, man. I can't tell you. Like every shot that he's in. He's different because of the lighting of him, because he's reflecting and refracting everything. When he's in a basement, he disappears. When he was on the rooftop, he was just this gigantic white, overexposed thing, you know, and uh, he was really difficult. Even after getting through the movie, it still remains hard. Difficult, yeah. right? Fire and water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then got about time for one more question. Okay. So um, tell me about kind of getting to experience Cannes, because I think it's really cool that you got to have oh, yeah. a revealed to the world this festival it was so yeah. overwhelming it was uh it was surreal and it was uh it was emotional too because yeah. seeing finally getting to see the movie kind of outside of pixar was incredible and just being at a place that loved loved cinema was just remarkable yeah there was something about judgment yeah that was really interesting for me because uh, um it's a festival that has a jury that picks films and uh, um, the fact that they picked our film um, not only gave us pride, but I also was moved by it for some mm -hmm. reason. Uh, I know, you know, Pete Doctor had three of his films get accepted into Cannes, um, but for us, it's just not anything we ever thought that would be possible or, or something like that that would even accept, you know, um, 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 the heart of this thing. And uh, they did. and so. It was, yeah, it was very moving. You know, I, I fought a whole life trying to belong in places as a minority, and so to he feel like a jury was just like, oh, we, we, we want this film to be a part of this um, selection of films. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. I kept, my grandfather was in the film business, and I just kept thinking about how proud he would have been. He, he came to mind many times yeah. throughout those few days. Well, you should both be very proud. It's it's a beautiful production, and I can't wait for more people to see it. So thank you thank so you. much. That thank means you. a great deal. Yeah, it really does. Thank you for bringing this to all of us. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Paul.